So it's a pretty nice day today. It got down into the freezing temperatures last night. There's still frost on the ground, but it, it's not too windy. So I thought I'd come down here and do a little bit of work. Really not working too hard this year. I'm really enjoying this place. I uh, worked really hard last year, got the place all cleaned up. Well, not clean, uh, totally cleaned up, but cleaned up enough that we can live on it and enjoy it. So now I can just kind of take my time and go at my own pace. It's been pretty nice. So as you know, Carolyn and I have been desperately trying to make sure we get a nice garden this year. Last year we did our test garden. I told you about that many times. She's got all kinds of heirloom seeds and regular seeds, just whatever, uh, ready for her garden next year. She wants to get a lot of tomatoes. I know she wants to get tomatoes. Green beans is a big deal. We want to get lots of green beans. We did this little test garden. And as you may know, this area up here was just covered in trees. It was just completely full. So the first year we were here, we tried a garden and we didn't have any success because there was just too much shade on this property. It also caused us a lot of struggles with our solar panels. Once I got everything squared away a little bit, last winter, I was able to clean this area up over here good enough that we could run a little test garden. And we had a lot of success with it. As small as this thing is, uh, we got a lot of vegetables out of it tons of green beans and and tomatoes out of this we're gonna try to get an area big enough and it may not be one spot it may be sectioned off we may have some garden up here and some garden over there and uh, it just depends on how it works out obviously we can extend the garden down a little bit but the biggest thing we got here is the corn garden now we're starting to really doubt ourselves about corn as to whether we really want corn or not I've been talking about a more carnivorous diet here recently and corn is one of the worst things you could actually do when you're talking about carnivorous diets you want to eat greens like green beans and spinaches and the, the green vegetables we're wanting to eat squash instead of pasta so the corn garden we may just do one year and see how it goes now remember we're gonna raise pigs this coming spring summer the corn stalks can be fed to the to the pigs they'll eat that they'll be good for them put on some fat so we can mix that in with the slop reducing our cost on on feed one of the problems i was having obviously was this the sun we got to have an, enough sun here well as you know on the east side it's all trees this is our, our wooded area and we really love our wooded area we go walking down here so we're going to keep this side now it's coming up on 10 o'clock and I don't mean to blind you, and, but you can see that the sun is still behind the trees at 10 o'clock. Now, in the fall time, it's not so bad because there's no leaves on the trees and the sun can break through. So we're getting some sun on the solar panels here. I'm sure you can see, but we got, you know, shaded areas. So the fall's not too bad, but in the summer, when the leaves are on the trees, we don't get any sun until about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So we cleaned all this up and that gives us all kinds of evening time sun. So we did the calculations and don't quote me, I don't remember how many hours you got to have for tomatoes. Let's say it's eight hours of sun. And we had eight hours of sun or, or whatever the needed amount was, we had enough. So that's why we, the tomatoes did well. Same thing with corn, we're gonna have to have more sun. So I came down here to clean this mess up and you can see that I've got all the trees cut down. And I'll link a video at the end of this video right on the screen it'll be next to my face and you can click and you can see me knocking down some of these trees well now it's just clean up is all we got to do I'm not in a big hurry these two cedar trees I like to get cleaned up I got some smaller trees over here that I want to get cleaned up I got a couple of trees that I didn't get all the way down yet so this isn't gonna be a big chore it's just a matter of stacking the branches I mean look at all this I was thinking about actually moving all these branches, but I might just leave these here, let them degrade right here. It's not hurting anything. And then next year we'll be able to use these as fire starter. Carolyn can use it for her cook stove. As I was cutting, everything was landing this direction. And so when I trimmed off the tops, it was just right there. And then once I get all that cleaned up, then we'll have to start focusing on the metal 
we got just junk everywhere so I don't know I may never get this cleaned up to a, a satisfactory level that I can mow it I might one of these days have to get a weed whacker and just weed whack this area kind of keep the weeds down keep snakes out of the garden this area just doesn't seem like it's gonna be that usable with all the rocks I mean look at that I mean you can't cut that it's just rocks everywhere so I don't know over the next 20 years it may be usable but definitely get enough sunlight so I gotta get the chainsaw out get the lawnmower out I'm gonna start with a couple little small trees over here now last time I, I did this I got a lot of people saying that's not gonna make a lot of firewood I think you're just wasting your time well these small trees would give us enough firewood to burn a week in our little tiny house it's hard to imagine how little firewood we are using when it comes to uh, the tiny house you know, we're using two little sticks uh, every 12 hours but the tree that we cut last time is the same size as this and I would imagine there's two weeks worth of firewood here believe it or not it really does not take a lot to heat that little house so I got this one I got some over here uh, then I'm gonna clean up we can get some of these branches moved over people wonder why I don't wear gloves and the reason is when I wear a glove on my right hand the glove gets stuck right here on the trigger and so when I'm holding it down and then I let go of the trigger the trigger doesn't release and so the blade is still running really fast <laughs> of the log comes to right here on my chainsaw quite a bit of it cleaned up now I got some of that cedar brush put up over there so I'm gonna load the wagon up see how much I got in the wagon I really have a hard time getting things into the wagon here recently
Somebody asked me why I leave the lawnmower running while I'm loading and unloading the trailer. Seems like a waste of gas. I agree in the summertime when you're using a lawnmower a lot, it's a waste of gas. But in the wintertime, I don't run it very often. So I'm, I'm running it to warm it up and to uh, charge the battery so the battery doesn't go bad. I run it about every oh, week or so, but I don't get to run it very long. So I thought I'd just let it warm up and get all the fluids to cycle through and charge the battery. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to say, hey, why don't you get a battery tender for your lawnmower? Well, a couple reasons. One, it takes electric. Now, I know it won't take a lot of electric, but every little piece of electric that I use, I have to account for with my solar panels. And there's just no reason to do it if I don't need to. Secondly, the battery that runs the water pump here for my water tank, my ABC tank, has a, I have a DC RV battery. Is ran by a lawnmower battery which is in the house i put a battery tender on that battery it's plugged in all the time and when i run the well the water pump when it shuts off then the battery tender charges it back up i never have a problem so if this battery here in the lawnmower ever started to wear down a little bit on me i just swap the batteries out on them and that way the battery tender could take care of the lawnmower battery while the lawnmower battery is running the RV pump, vice versa. So that's kind of the plan. That way I don't have to buy a second battery tender, run extension cords, and figure out how to hook it up to the, to the existing electric system. So I feel like I made a pretty good dent today. I'm starting to see the light of day on the other side of the brush pile. So I got the, this path cleaned up here to the cedar tree. So now I'll be able to work on getting the branches off the cedar tree. I'll get this tree cut up. I'll be able to back the lawnmower up to that cedar tree then. And I'll be able to drag that cedar tree log down into the woods with the lawnmower. I've done that before. It, it works fine. If you'll check out that video where I was cleaning this up, knocking all those trees down, you'll see the massive difference that we've made. So I hope I can inspire you <laughs> to clean up your mess so you can live your dream. Thanks for watching.